Today is day 158 of Blender. It is also Friday, July 15th, 2022. And for the past two days, I've been following this um, text animation tutorial by Browley Animation, and I'm just going to follow it again today. So I'll click on General, um, go up, and then scroll down to Geometry Nodes. I like to hide my spreadsheet because it's not useful to me at the moment. Click on New, disconnect the input from the output, and then because I'm going to do a text animation, I need text, and the way to do that is um, by getting a string um, in Blender text is a string so I'm just gonna be saying string from now on so I'll do shift a and get a string but I'm gonna do string two curves because I need the strings to convert to curves right and so um, in order to control what my string says if I go here to modifier properties I can connect the string to the input and now I'll be able to control it here and I'll just write my name and then I can't see it yet in the viewport because I haven't connected anything to my output. And once I do that, I'll be able to see my name in the viewport. And then I'll just go over here to object properties and change the rotation of X to be 90. So it rotates 90 degrees along the X axis, which is the red axis in this case. Um, I'll go here to the folder and change the font to Arial Black. And then I'll change the character spacing to be 1.2. All right. And then in order to give um, it some... Um, Faces. I'll do shift a and fill the curves because again my string um, was converted into curves and then now I can use a fill curve node and I can change the fill type to be n gone so that the edges are not that messy and I go back to solid mode by the way I was in wireframe mode um, and then now that um, I used a fill curve it added faces to the curves and now it becomes a mesh right it becomes a mesh now and now I can do shift a extrude mesh that's the wrong thing X out of that shift a um, extrude mesh and that's going to give some thickness to the mesh to control that value I can control it here or I can go back to modifier properties and connect that value to the input and I can just change it through here now all right and then if I notice though if I go to the back I notice that the fill didn't apply to the back and so I can just do shift a join geometry um, and put that in here and join both the fill curve effect and the extrude mesh and now it's both filled in the front and in the back okay so now what I'll do is I will do I'll select it right and then I'll do shift D to make a copy and then I'll press G to grab it and then Y to grab along the Y axis which in this case is the green axis and then I'll go here and just change it to my last name because my transition is going to be from my first name to my last name all right and then what I'll do is I'll just go to the outliner and just give them their names here so I know what's what and then I'll hide it in the viewport and in the render view so I don't see it in my render. And then I'll go to layout and I'll do shift A and add another object, a cube, and this one I'll call it my animation in the outliner. And then I'll click on new for a new geometry node system. And then I'll disconnect the input from the output and then what I'll do, oops, wrong thing, um, is I'll select the Sarai and then put that in there and that's going to give me the object information node of Sarai. So this is kind of like a copy of Sarai, of the original Sarai. Real quick, I'll just do rotation 90 again. Um, and then I'll do the same thing for, Mal for Malte, so I'll just drag, oops, wrong thing, Malte, and just put that in there. So now I also have a copy of Marte. Um, now here's the thing, in order to make changes to this, um, to the copies, I have to go to the original and make them realize that they have copies of, them of themselves so that they know that, um, the copies can have changes if that makes sense so I'll do shift a and realize instances and that makes the originals realize that it has um, instances of themselves so it has copies of themselves so that those copies may be changed um, so I know I can go back to the animation um, and I'll go to modify properties click on geometry nodes should be here okay um, and then what I'll do is I'll do shift a and get a point distribute g points distribute and this is a preset by bradley animation himself it's not an actual node so you go here and you download it on the first link um by the way i always link all of my sources in the what do you call it in the in these so the video link is there um and then once you download it you go to edit preferences then you go to add-ons and then you go and click install i had mine in my desktop and it looks like this this is the file I clicked install add-on and then I just searched for it and I did like Bradley and I make sure it's on and then I also made sure that node presets it's on. 
Okay, and now what that does, it takes my geometry as a mesh and it converts it into points. And so when I put that in the output, I'll be able to see my geometry into points. And the reason I don't actually see it is because the amount is actually very small. So in order to control the amount, I can go here and control it manually, or I could just connect it to the input and I'll be able to control it here. And I could do something like 3000. And now I can see my geometry as points. Um, and now I'll do the same thing. I'll just shift D and put that in here at the bottom and geometry, put that into mesh, and then also um, select the amount, and I want it to be the same for both of them, although I want the second one to be a little bit more, so I'll do multi, oops, not multiply, I'll do a math node, and put it in here, and make sure it's multiply, and change it to something like 1.1, um, and now this one is gonna, Malta is actually gonna have more points than um, Sarai. Alright, so at this point I'll do shift A, X, Y, Z, G mix, X, Y, Z vector, and then I'll do shift A, set position, and then I'll do shift A, wrong thing, transfer, that's not how you spell transfer, attribute, okay. So I'll change this real quick to vector, and I'll change this to index, and then this goes in here, because I'm setting the position of, whoops, of the thing the um sarai it sounds weird okay um and then what this is this actually goes down here and this goes down here so vector a the position goes in vector a here but then vector b actually goes through this transfer attribute so it goes source just to the to the point points to source i can't even speak position to attribute and then okay so vector b is this one and now I believe if I put this vector into the position and I move this, I, oh my god. Anyway, if I change this factor, now it just, obviously it transfers into Marte. Okay, and I can control that if I go to layout, shift A, and I add in empty, and I'll do a uh, sphere. And I'll go here, object data properties, and change it into arrows, and then do GX. Um, and then I will go and do Shift A and do a directional fall off, and then make that the value that controls my factor, and the object that controls it is going to be the empty. So now if I move this, it's going to be the same thing. So GX is going to be the same thing. Now, what I'll do is um, go here and I'll just do two nodes. I'll do Shift A points to volume and then do shift a volume to mesh and then I will change the radius here to be something like zero point I don't know three and then um, I'll do control s to save this real quick let's say state 715 22 dot blend desktop nope wrong thing blender blends let's say blender file okay and it's looking a little weird, so I'm going to do modifiers, remesh, and then change this to 0. Point what? You're kidding. You're kidding. 0. 0.05. There we go. And then to give it some more definition, maybe 0. 0.01 over here, and then maybe 150 over here, or 200 at this point. Um, and then maybe... 10,000 and the amount of actual what do you call them points maybe change this to 0 0.02 250 that makes it more defined select from smooth shading um let me think so maybe what if i do 100 150 80 but then 0 0.01 or 0 0.03. I'm just playing around with the values until I see that it's right. <sighs> 0 0.02. There we go. Something like that. Okay, so voxel amount 100, radius 0 0.03, and then voxel size 0 0.02, and then amount 10,000. What if I do 0 0.01? That's even more defined, and then I think that's good. Alright, so let me save that. And then what I'll do is, um, I just do this and I'll do GX. It's looking like that. Ew, that looks really. Oh, because it's. 
multiplied. So how shall I fix that? If I, eh, I don't even want to fix it. I don't care too much about it. All right, let me just do GX. I'm not gonna go crazy about it. All right, at this point I have to reference back to the tutorial because I'm not sure how to really, there's a lot of like stuff going on with the directional fall off. So let me see, maybe I sh won't reference back to the tutorial. I'll just open up the file from yesterday and then just copy that because sometimes I get lost in the tutorial. So yesterday was this one, right? 714. Let me see what I did there. Okay, so geometry nodes. Okay, great. So now it's not responding. All right, click on that. Now you can see all of this, which is crazy. All right, so I believe this is where the stuff starts going a little cuckoo. Um, so this is this is so hard to even figure out. Okay, so I have one, two, three directional falloffs, and then one noise 3D. So, and then I have the X, Y, Z. So the X, Y, Z. Okay, let me just try to figure things out right now. Okay, let me just start from here. So I have the transfer attribute. From the transfer attribute, I have one directional fall off, and it is um. connected as a custom vector. So the attribute is connected to the custom vector over here. I'll just move this to the middle so I can see kind of what's going on with the stuff. And then let me see. Direction max one, so that's that. And then the attribute is also connected not only to the add, okay, custom vector, custom vector for another directional fall off. So shift G and then it's connected over here for as a custom vector. And um, I believe there's supposed to be, whoops, an add. So I have a, cust a transfer and then it is, where is the XYZ? So it's connected by the add, which is connected to the first directional fall off. I'm so lost right now. So the position, oh, this is not the first directional fall off. That's the point distribution. Okay, so the add is combine x, y, z, which is connected to this directional fall off, which is just weird. So instead of it being Oh, that's weird. Let me go back to this one. So, huh, I don't have an ad here. So, okay, let me go back. So I have, um, a directional fall off and it's combine XYZ and then it's add and then it's G XYZ Mac vector. So shift A combine XYZ, put that in there, shift A G directional, whoops, directional fall off, put that here, connect that, and now it's frozen. Great. Um, let me see. And then there's an add. Oh, that's not supposed to go there. Great. But the add is connected to the point distribution and the gmx vector. And now it's frozen. This is just amazing. <sighs> okay, I'm just going to start again because this thing is frozen, so that's great. Let me just end Blender and open up what I saved last, which is this. And then let me open up. Oops, not that one. Wrong thing. Um, the 14, which was yesterday. All right, and then. Okay, so from this point, what was I doing? Um, let me think. Um, 
But yeah, so I have the GY thingy, so I'll do vector math and put that in there for add and then just move this to the side here and I'll do shift A and then I'll do combine X, Y, Z and then put that in here and that goes into the vector, but then I'll do shift A and then do directional fall off again and then that would actually be connected to here and I need to see which direction actually it's connected to. So back to geometry nodes. You know what I've noticed, like a pattern? So if I don't remember it, it's because I didn't under understand it. Yeah. So I don't understand this part <laughs> or how it actually works. But um, we'll get there. We'll get there. All right. Um, it goes into the Z. Okay. So this is connected to the Z. And I believe... Let me see. So this one... It has a directional of one and then one at the bottom. So this one has a directional of one. Woo, that's ugly. I'll just do GX. I can see that happening here. All right, and then that's one thing. And then there's also, let's see, vector here. And then the other vector is the transfer attribute. No, that's not the right thing. This is this up here. Okay, and then this is connected to vector A and XY, Z, and then vector B is actually connected to an add. It's the same thing, um, but at the bottom it's a little different. So it's shift A, and then it is um, vector math, and it's add, and it's going into here. And then I believe that if I go into here, it's combine X, Y, Z, and then map range, and then it's all connected to the G directional fall off from that one. So it's combine X, Y, Z, put that in there, and then shift A, map range. And then it's connected to, let me see, transfer, nope, that's the wrong thing. Where is the transfer? Transfer's here, and the transfer has two directional fall offs. Interesting g point distribute then it goes to two directional falloffs and then there's one that's connected to the factor in xyz so let me go back so after the transfer there is this one and this one's connected to the custom vector here um and then let me go back and then it's also connected to the float curve here um, as the value and then the set position is a scale. So I need shift A float curve and then shift A scale, which is actually a vector. Is it a vector math or is it normal math? Shift A math. Is it scale over here? I don't see scale. Shift A, vector, math. Wrong thing. Scale. Not length, scale. All right, and then this is set to the set position, which is over here as the offset, I believe. Wrong thing. Okay, um, let me see. So the scale is set to the offset for the supposition, and then the scale is to the value of the float curve, and then the float curve, whoa, nope, didn't mean to do that, goes kind of like to here, and then this point goes down a little bit, like that, and then this value is connected to the g-directional falloff, I believe. It's connected to the first G directional fall off, which is over here, but is the value or is it the, yeah, it's the value. It's connected to the first G directional fall off, which should be up here. Where? Bless you. Um, over here. 
And then I know that... Wrong thing. I keep doing this. Wrong thing. What is going on? Okay. So that's connected to that. And it's also connected to the factor in G, X, Y, Z, which I think it already is. And then the second one um, is connected as a transfer attribute. And that's the map range, which is connected to the add vector. So shift A. Wait. Which is... Um, so I'll just do shift D and put that in here, and then this is connected to this over here for the custom vector, and then that fallout is connected to the value, I believe, of the map range, which is connected to which one of these? Let me see. Um, to the Z, which is connected to the add, which is not here, question mark. Let me see, vector B, the add is connected to vector B and the GY, GXYZ or whatever, which is this one. So this is vector B that's connected to this over here. Beautiful. Um, and then I know that if I just go back to this one, I can see that it's 0, 0, 0, 1, and they're all controlled by the empty which is good and then the map range I just have to check it's float and it is linear it goes into the Z and then I have a noise 3D which goes into the vector on the scale so that's shift A 3D noise which goes into is it the color or is it the factor it's the color color into the oops vector um and then the frequency changes to be something such as 0 0.2 and then the scale is something really big like 16 that that controls kind of um the fluidness all right and then i think that's it so if i do gx very very pretty although there is a problem what is this bro like what is this why is it like this so it must be something wrong with the nodes and I noticed that in the beginning when I did the XYZ something it was right at the beginning where that happened so let me see what I did wrong here okay um so let me just go back to the old one and uh, hide them all, I guess, and just count them. They're trying very hard to keep this organized. Okay, and then hide this, hide this, hide this this in here, put this in here, put this in here, put this in here, get all of this and just put it in here and then hide it. This is so messy, but it's okay. Okay, okay, so this is really bad, but I'm just really trying to figure out how, what's on, what I'm missing here. So I have, let me just count them. So how many nodes do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I just lost count. Three. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, if I counted right. Oh, come on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Huh? Am I going crazy? Let me count that again. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, 23. 
Um, so it must be one of the values that's wrong. This is so annoying. Okay, so it's definitely not these. I know these are right. Um, I know this is right. I know this is right. It has to be something with a directional fall off. Basically anything that I added after. <laughs> so maybe the map range is float. Clamp is on for the map range. Where is the map range? I forgot. Okay, clamp is still on. <sighs> the transfer. I have to make sure everything's connected to everything. So let me just move this to the side. Hide these. Hide these ones as well. Because these are not the problem. I believe it's just these. So I know this one. Okay, let me start with the first directional fall off. So that would be this one. And this one's only connected to this to this XYZ, which is the Z and this connected to the add vector, which is connected to the G X Y Z for that. And um let me check. It's looking pretty similar. There's nothing really off with it. So this is not the problem. Okay, so let me move these over. This one's connected to the G, X, Y, Z vector, but then all of these at the bottom. So I have this transfer attribute, the transfer attribute is connected Let me see. So the transfer attribute has two, three, so three, four, five, right? But why is there three, three, four, five? Okay, good. That's fine. So it's not this one. Um, the map range is fine. I already checked it. Oh, you know, no. Actually, hold on. I know that the map range was changed. Zero, one, zero, one. And then over here... It's zero one one zero. There we go. So that's one thing. I think it has to do with the set position. So that's one thing that I missed on the map range. It's supposed to be zero one one zero. Alright, and then the two directional fall offs um, that are connected to the map range. But over here. There's only one directional fall of connected to the map range. Let me see, where's the map range? Oh yeah, there's only one, yeah. So then that's connected to the XYZ vector, right, which is zero, which is connected to the add as vector B, vector B, and then the, that's the map range, and then the XYZ, there's also this stuff up here. So this stuff is fine. I just need to figure out this stuff now. Float curve. I don't think that's the problem. The float curve is connected to the directional fall off here. And then the directional fall off is also a factor of the XYZ vector. And it's also connected to the float curve. Okay, good. And then that's connected. The set position, so the position is set to the XYZ. Set position, where is it? XYZ, and then the offset is actually, oh my God. The offset is connected to the scale. So the scale, the vector is a 3D noise, which is actually scale, wrong thing. Um, I kid you not, I don't even know what's wrong right now. I don't even know what went wrong. I should have stopped it, when, stopped it, I can't even speak, I should have stopped it when I saw it happening. Um, the scale, and then the float curve. Pretty noise. 
So the float curve, the color is connected to the vector and the scale, and then that's connected to the float curve. And then that's literally it. Like, I don't see anything else that might be different. Like, what did I do wrong? I even got the animation right. So once I, it's, if I'm telling you, if it's not one thing, it's the other. I got the animation right, and then this happens. This sucks. So weird. It must be like one small mistake that I did. Like, it must be. Like, there's no way that it's anything else. This is so messy. Um, I don't know. Should I do it again? I feel like I should do it again. Alright, let me do file, save, copy as um, problem. And then change it to desktop, and then Blender, and then animations. Um, wait, no, that's not it. Blender, I just, blends, okay, save copy. And then what I'll do is I'll just um, open it up again and try again. What's today's date? 15th, right? So I should open up to where I was before. I was here. Beautiful. Um, okay, so let me try again for the 5,000th time. So I have... Let me just copy from this. So... Um, okay, so let me put this like this. And then put this here. Put this here. All right, and then let me see. So the transfer attribute, okay. So I'll start with the transfer attribute. So the transfer attribute, where's my stuff? Okay, this one. So the transfer attribute is connected to three things. It's connected to a g-directional fall off, another one, and then an add. So I'll have to it's already connected to this one, which is connected to the XYZ. Let me see. <laughs> God bless me. All right. This XYZ is this one. Okay, already. So that's good. So it's this one and then this one that I have to add. So it's the Shift A directional fall off and connect that as a custom vector here. And then this goes into here. And then Shift A add. No, that's a math. Vector math. And then it's also connected to this one as vector one. And then this one, this add one, is actually connected to the XYZ as vector B. Hmm. Vector B. But let me see. So it's add vector B, and combine XYZ for this directional follow up at the bottom. So combine x, y, z in the z, and then this goes here, vector, I believe is what I'm getting at here. So it's connected to the map range before, though. So shift A, map range, and put that in there. Um, and then it's 0, 1, 1, 0. Let me see. So it's zero, zero, one, one, zero. Okay. Um, and that's like that. And then it's connected to an XYZ vector, which is the add, which is vector B. And then this one is directional fall off to the factor. So we're... Nope. Wrong thing. Wrong thing again. This directional fall off is the factor for oh, this, which is already like that. Okay. So that's good, and then let me go back. So after this stuff, um, I have to figure things out. Let me see, so none of this is connected to this. It's vector A, Z, transfer attribute, okay, this one, 
And the float curve is connected to that, which is connected to the scale. So I have to do shift A, float curve, and then put this in here, and then put this here. Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. Okay, so this is connected to shift A, vector math, which should be scale. And if I go here, this is connected to the directional falloff that is connected to the XYZ vector as the value. So it's here. And then the float curve is connected to the scale as the value, which is already like that. And then, oh, here it is. What's that problem? See, it just happened again. Oh no, okay, we're good. <laughs> All right, so the scale over here. Okay, flow curve. And then the scale is connected to the set position, I believe, as the offset, vector offset in the set position over here. And then the vector that's connected to the scale is actually this G3D noise. So that's shift A, 3D noise. Oh my god, that's not what I meant. Oh, although that is really pretty. That color is connected to the vector of the scale here. And it's something like 16, and the frequency is like 0 0.2. Um, and then I'll be able to see that here. Okay. And then let me see, let me go back. So that's done, that's done, this stuff is done. This stuff is also done. The XYZ vector though is connected to the position um, for the set position. So the XYZ vector is position. Okay, so that's good. This is good. I do, that's good, that's fine. I think I did that one. I think I'm done. Oops, wrong one. If I miss something, whatever. At this point, I'm so done. Let me just check. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm missing three nodes. Are you kidding me? What else is there for this? Maybe it's another directional fall off because I feel like I don't have that many. So let me go back here. So I have one directional fall off. I have another one here. I have this one already. Um, I already have this one is at the top. Do I? Yeah, it's this one. So this one is done because I'm good with that one. Then I have this one. And then... Which one's which? So this one is this one at that. And then this one's this one. Girlie is confused. I have three. I don't know where they're coming from. So... These three are connected over here. This one is just connected from nowhere, which is fine. But this one is the one connected to the XYZ. So there's three. So for here, for mine, there's one here, and then there should be another one. So this one's there, this one's there. Oh, so I'm missing a missing one, which is connected to the add, which is the XYZ is actually connected to the add. Girlie is confused. Okay, hold on. So for this one, no, this one, the add is connected to the transfer attribute, so that's fine. And it's also connected, though, to the XYZ, which is fine. 
Okay, so this one's good. Then I have this one, which is connected to the flow curve. Um, I'm just trying to see which one's which, because I have three. I don't know which. Okay, this one's connected to the flow curve, which is connected to the XYZ. But then this one also is connected to the XYZ. So it's just another one. So it's another G directional fall off at the top. Or maybe it is this one. Girlie's confused. It's connected to the flow curve. Which is connected to... No, it's not. Okay, there's another add. And there's another XY. Okay, so here's what I'm getting at right now. Um, I have another add, which is a vector math. Oops, wrong thing. Vector math, I'm just going to put it down here. Shift A, combine X, Y, Z, and Shift A, um, directional fall off again. And then this one, I believe, is connected to the Z, and this is connected, I don't even know, connected to vector, ah, vector A. It's connected to set position. Interesting. It's connected to vector A. Let me see. So vector A. No, that's connected to vector B. Girlie is confused. I'm lost right now. <laughs> Alright. Which G... Okay, the G... The um, position of the first one... Um, let me see. The position of the first one is connected to that vector. Um, this is B. The position of this one is connected to A. And then this is connected to... I'm so confused. This is connected to X, Y, Z as vector A. Like that. Alright, and that's that. And it's C. And then I also need to note if one okay so it's like that and then that's connected to that just connected to that okay so now let me count so i have one two three four okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty two one twenty two i need one more oh twenty three full curve okay good i'm done thank god um all right so if i do this gx not it finally working but looking really weird does it have to do with the um fill type i thought that i fixed that part it is ngons right see it would have been very ugly if it wasn't i wonder is it because of the amount it's ten thousand. so how about i change this to be something like one does it make it better and then i guess that's fine. It's just so weird. How about I do 0 0.5 like it was? It's just very odd. Because this one's very, like, smoother. And it becomes this, which is kind of, like, ew. 0 0.3. 0 0.8. But it's way too... It's weird. Okay, it doesn't really matter. At this point, I'll take what I have. I'll save this, um, and then, yeah, that's it, finally have something, um, okay, let me just do GX, alright, so I'll do shift A now to the animation part, right, I'll rotate this 90 degrees on the X, scale it, G, X, front view by pressing the button under the escape key and hovering over front, and then I will just control this again, and then I will 
go the time frame and I'll make it 80 this time. And then I'll start here, GX right before it start, starts affecting the S. And I'll just press N and go here to the item and hover over the X location that it's currently in and press I to insert that location keyframe. Then I'll go to 80 and then I'll do GX and then put it right after it stops affecting the letter. Which is about right here. Hover over the X, press I, and now if I go to one and just play it, it's going to play that animation and go through that. Alright, and so um Okay, so looking like that. Alright, and then at this point, um, I'll do the material stuff. So let me control S, and then I have colors here. So I, I don't know, should I use the green or purple? Let me use the purple. And then I'll go here to material preview, so I can see that. And then I'll go to Material Properties, click on New, and then Base Color, Hex, and put that in there. And then this one, I'll click on New and give it a color of this Base Color, Hex, and I won't be able to see it because I have to actually go to Modifiers the animation and I have to create a new geometry node system and if I go back to geometry nodes um, and click on it I click on new and then I just do shift a and set material put that in there and then I choose the material that I want and then I'll be able to see it in layout mode okay now I'll do GX it's just looking very uh. alright and then I'll go to here, select the light, go to object data properties, change into a sun, change the strength to three, remove the shadows, and then I'll just do G to grab, Y to grab along the Y axis, and R to rotate until it's hitting that. It's just very contrasty, girly, don't like it. Alright, G, Y, move that over here. Maybe a lot back actually. Front view by pressing the button under the escape key and hovering over front. And then I'll do um, control, alt, numpad zero to kind of set my thing up, and then if that doesn't work just edit preferences add on nope inputs and then make sure I emulate numpads on if you don't have an numpad um, let me just see 1920 1080 so maybe I'll just scale this on the X so S and then X and then I just don't like the color it just be looking very eh. all right I guess I guess it's fine all right so I'll just I'll do um, control alt numpad zero to get out of that you can press the middle mouse button and to go back into the view I press on zero okay I think that's good right but I want to kind of get that Okay, so let me get out of here and go a little bit more farther to get all that. Alright, I think that's fine. Alright, I'm going to control S this and then I'm going to go to output and now time for the rendering part. So I'm just going to make a folder. Um, call it, what am I calling it, 71522, and today is what, my name? But, like, green? I don't know, I need better names for this. Wrong one, wrong one, what's actually wrong with me? Okay, accept, and now they're gonna render 80 images um, in the file format as P of PNG into that folder. Um, once I do render and render animation, hopefully it does that. Um, and the scale's not weird. Okay, good. Um, and then I'll unpause when the 
all the 80 frames are rendered. I'm just going to open the folder first so that I can see or show at least what's happening. Nope, wrong one. Oh my god, don't tell me I picked the wrong folder. Okay, so you can see the text animations rendering. Alright, and I was going to say, and that's it for today, but it's not. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just pausing. Okay, so at this point, all the frames are rendered in the folder, so I'll close this out and close this out, and then go at the top and then scroll down until I go to the plus video editing and then video editing, and then I'll just kind of scroll up until zero, zero, and then I'll add image sequence, and then I'll go to that folder that I just set up, which is one. I'll select the first image, and then I'll shift select the last image, which didn't work. Oops. Alright, and then add image strip. And then what I'll do is I will go to output properties at the top over here, and then select the folder in which I want my animation, like the video, to actually render. So I like to put it as the same folder um, as the images and just do a new folder inside and call it video and accept. And then I want it to be a format of FFMPEG video. And then for the encoding, I need the container to be MPEG4 and the output quality to be high quality. And then I do control S to save. And then I go at the top and I scroll um, up and then I render, render animation. And then in a few seconds, I'll be able to see the animation rendered um, in that folder if I could find it. So hold on, desktop, blender, animations, which one, this one, video, and then the video after I wait a few seconds. So let me see, it's almost done. This looks like, reminds me of Nickelodeon. And this is the final result. Nice. Alright, and that's it for today. Bye.